Stadium Championship Series Red continues its stay in St. Louis. As frustrations mounted for the black and green wrecking machine last round, Adam Anderson points lead quickly dwindled as the series points chase heats up. Can Camden Murphy fly to the Dragon to the top of the leaderboard? Is this the week that Jamie Garner gets the Raging Bull into victory lane? Or can Bryce Kenny clip the competition? This is Stadium Championship Series Red. This is round four. This is Monster Jam. Good afternoon and welcome back to the gateway to the Midwest, St. Louis, Missouri, as this afternoon 26,000 fans are piling into the Dome at America Center for Stadium Championship Series Red. Hello everyone, I'm Scott Jordan alongside Barry Musauer from the Monster Jam Studios. And Barry, last round, Camden Murphy finally won his first event championship of the season. He now trails Adam Anderson by only three points in the series point standings. What does Camden have to do this round to take the series points lead? He's going to have to keep that confident approach to the top because uh, it's not a short, it's not a real comfortable lead for Adam Anderson now. So Camden really, once he gets in a groove, he's hard to beat. And Adam Anderson had front steer issues and grave diggers, so he didn't even compete in racing. That allowed Camden the opportunity to get that close. On the other side of that, Borey, what does Adam have to do to rebound here? He's really going to have to give himself a chance in each competition, so it's imperative that he makes every competition and goes rounds in racing. And another contender has emerged in El Toro Loco's Jamie Garner. He continued his surprise start to the season. He finished third in the event and sits third on the series point standing, just 13 away from the top. Barry, I've been so impressed from Jamie so far this season. What have you seen that has allowed him to have this season so far? I think Jamie's just going for it. He's got this new identity with El Toro Loco. It's not the overboard body that he has to worry about paying for if he wrecks. So I think he's just going for it, and it's really fun to watch. With an opportunity to overtake Adam Anderson for the series points lead, we caught up with the Bakugan Dragonoid driver Camden Murphy just a few minutes ago in this UNOH Pit Report. We had a really interesting start to the year this year. I mean, our first couple of events weren't that great, but now after this overall event championship that we had, our first one of the year, we're super close to Adam. So there, this is a really, really long tour. So, you know, anything is possible, but you know, obviously, you know, there, there's a lot of mechanical stuff out there right now. Everybody's battling right now, especially with, with all the mud that we went through. So, um, you know, being this close to Adam, if I can just stay consistent, I think that's really, truly gonna be the key. It has been awesome to finally be under a roof. I mean, our first couple events were obviously in the open. So, you know, hopefully we, uh, we, we get some consistency throughout the year. We don't have a ton more mud events because that's really, really hard on equipment. And, you know, I'm glad to just finally be under a roof here in St. Louis. Well, consistency has definitely been a key for Camden Murphy as we take a look at the driver lineup for the Dome at America Center. Three event champions so far on this series. Adam Anderson, Tom Mintz, Camden Murphy. Who do you like to walk away with the trophy here today? You know who I'm really paying attention to is Bryce Kinney. He's really kind of flown under the radar, but he's been consistent. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Bryce has got today. And Bryce Kenny just one big moment away from that elusive event championship. We'll see if he gets it here in St. Louis. Let's take a look at the event format for the Dome in America's Center Round 4. Racing, bracket-style competition, the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and then freestyle competition. Three events, 12 points to the winner of each competition. And the driver with the most points at the end of the events crown the event champion. It's time now for track talk. And Barry, the St. Louis track on the surface seems very easy to navigate with drivers hitting smooth turns in Round 3. There's still a lot of wreckage. Last round, we saw some some fire runs and racing. What has made this dirt inside the dome so unforgiving? I think it's notoriously tacky here in St. Louis. So you really have to be on your P's and Q's when you're navigating the track. You don't want to take that turn too fast because you'll end up on the bicycle real quick. What are the P's and Q's exactly? <laughs> you know, you just have to really make sure that you're hitting your marks. You don't want to mess up. You got to make sure your opponent is the one that's messing up. So you got to like push that. them to the limit. I like that. P's and Q's from Barry Musauer. Here's your racing bracket round one. Jester Max D, Black Pearl Grave Digger, Soldier Fortune Kraken, 
Vendetta and Megalodon, Velociraptor, Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior, El Toro Loco, and Bakugan Dragonoid get the buys. Who do you like in round one? That Black Pearl Grave Digger matchup stands out to me because Cole Bernard used to turn wrenches for Adam Anderson and Grave Digger years ago. So anytime they line up, you know each one of them wants to win. Well, anytime Cole beats Adam, he really rubs it in. We saw that epic picture of Adam on the back of Cole's truck last season. So we'll see if history repeats itself here in St. Louis. Right now, let's get to the track here for round one. We head to the Dome at America's Center. It's Matt Pagliarulo and Jester up against the 14-time World Finals champion, Tom Mintz in Max D, and we are off and running. Oh, Matt off to a little slow start. He's given the edge to Tom Mintz right away. As you can see, he's really out of shape, and he's got a commanding lead for Max D right now. And Tom Mintz now has figured out the mental mishaps that plagued him in round three. He's got a great lane across that first half of the track. Now a wide turn. This is going to cost him for his time for next round. Remember that round one time here goes towards the next round for these drivers. And Tom Mintz will cross the finish line 25.040. And Max D advances to round two. Next up here in round one, Lafayette, Louisiana's Caleb Blood and Soldier Fortune up against Matt's son, Nick Pagliarulo in Kraken, their first meeting of the season. And here we go, great starts for both. Into the berm, Kraken goes a little high. That gives Caleb Blood the advantage. They gotta make a full lap around that small circle onto the outside oval. It's Soldier Fortune with the lead. And Kayla's got a slight edge out of the inside of the track. So as you can see, oh, it looks like Nick has a rear steer issue right here. That's gonna cost him big time. Kayla is also kinda on a ragged edge run. She clips both pods, not gonna slow her down at all. Soldier Fortune takes the win with a 25 point. 900 time. Let's take a look at the super glue glued to the action replay. Man, as you can see, she's clipping this turn pop, which in any close race that might hurt her, but she had an advantage because Nick was kind of out of the water. Next up, Mike Christensen, Vendetta, Taladuk, Megalodon from last round. The back, you saw the tires just go in, look like a tie rod. That caused now Mike Christensen and Vendetta Bari to not make it here in racing. What could be causing the, the backup here? They've had all night to fix it. Uh, well, when you have extensive damage, like it looked like it shifted the motor plate in the chassis, so that's never good. You, you got to have that stuff line up so that your truck can compete and apply the power through the transmission, through the drive line. It's going to give Todd Duke an easy buy run here. Tough break for Mike Christensen and that brand new Vendetta. And Todd didn't compete in racing last round, so he gets a nice shot at the track, 24.880. Adam Anderson, Grave Digger, Colvinar, Black Pearl. A shot of Adam Anderson. This looks like deja vu for me. He's back in the pits again. This time it's a fuel line issue that's going to cause him to miss racing. What a catastrophic time for him to start having these gremlins peek back up on him. Yeah, that's a tough break. I was really looking forward to this race against Colvinar in the Black Pearl. But Adam is losing points after every round. So he's really gonna have to make up ground here as Covernard makes his buy run. This is for time, so it's gonna matter in the next round of racing. This is Covernard's essential qualifying run. Covernard five and four on the season. He does have one racing win that happened in round one in Oakland on this series and a great pass for Covernard and the Black Pearl as we take a look at the time, 20.847. Since Covernard to the next round, let's take a look at the bracket for round two, Velociraptor, Max D, Great Clips, Mohawk, Warrior, Black Pearl, El Toro, Loco, Soldier, Fortune, Fox Kugan, Dragonoid, and Megalodon. A lot to like about these round two matchups, Bari. Yeah, I'm looking at that matchup with Camden Murphy and Todd LaDuke. Man, that one is like a final round anywhere. Round one is done. Round two is next. Make sure you come on back. Camden Murphy trying to make it two in a row in St. Louis. Monster Jam action continues with Stadium Championship Series Red next. Welcome back to the Dome for round two of Monster Jam Racing. And our first matchup is Travis Mowry in Velociraptor up against Tom Mintz and Max D. So far on the season, Travis Mowry undefeated against Tom Mintz. Anytime you're undefeated against Tom Mintz, that's a great thing. That's a great confidence booster for Travis. But you got to think, you know, Tom Mintz, he's the veteran. He's the professor. He's not going to let that get in his head one bit. Travis with eight racing round wins on the season. That leads this series. And right now it is Max D out of the berm and into the outside oval first. Travis got a work cut out for him if he wants to catch him up. What a big lead for Tom Mintz. Anytime you have a slight lead like this, your opponent knows it. So they really try to press to that finish line to see if you can make up the ground. And look, look at Travis the final, Mowry. The final corner. Tom went wide and Travis cut it out 24.570. Let's take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. I said earlier that, you know, Tom Mintz might not let this bother him, but this is three races in a row now that Travis has gotten the best of him. So it might be playing a little mind game with Tom Mintz. Who knows? Next up in round two, Caleb Blood in Soldier Fortune. 
And she is up against Jamie Garner in El Toro Loco. So Jamie Garner comes in right now with a great racing record on the season, seven and three. Caleb Blood, three and three. And here we go, continuing round two of action. It is the Dome at America Center, and it is Jamie Garner with the lead. He is out of the berm and hits the chalk. He had a huge hole shot out of the starting gate. I don't know if Kayla was sleeping or if there was a problem with the light, but she's kind of catching up. She's making up ground. Let's see this final turn is going to be crucial. It's too little too late. I believe final turn for El Toro locally. He clips the pod. It doesn't matter. Jamie Garner gets another racing win. 24.720. El Toro Loco heads to the semifinals. Take a look at the replay. And he's just on a great run so far with Jamie and El Toro Loco. Kayla's got the hood shedding there. I don't know if that played a part in her lining up that last jump, but it definitely went for a ride of its own on that final jump towards the finish line. Black Pearl still getting work done in the pit areas. We move on to Camden Murphy and Baku Gondragonoid, who won last round's racing competition. And he is up against Todd the Duke in Megalodon. A slow start to the season. Todd with his first racing round win of the year today in St. Louis. And here we go, two heavy hitters trying to advance to the semifinal round. Whoever wins this race is going to have a huge confidence boost because this is like a final round anywhere you go, and it's going to play out big for the points championship as far as the racing points that these guys are gathering here today. Camden Murphy with the lead. Here we go into the final corner, and Camden on a drift. Todd takes a great lane, goes tight around the pod, and what a finish. Todd LaDuke going to get the win, 23.690. Take a look at the super glue, glue to the action replay. Wow, that's the confidence that Todd needs to really pick up his season. He's kind of been dwindling lately, but this might be the confidence booster that he needs going across the finish line first over Camden Murphy. Our final matchup in round two, Cole Bernard and the Black Pearl up against Bryce Kenny and Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior. A matchup between two drivers who have each won a racing competition so far this season. And look at Cole Bernard get off the line slow. Wow, and it looks like Bryce Kenny is on a great run so far. He's confident. He knows he's in the lead right now. All he has to do is really just have a smooth racing pass, and he's got this one. What is going on with the Black Pearl? Mechanical issues persist, and Bryce Kenny going around the final corner. All he's got to do is cross that finish line. Colvinard gives way, and Bryce Kenny will advance to the semifinal round. Wow, that's an easy race. I'm looking for this nice matchup coming up. As you can see, the bracket here, Scott. Our semifinal bracket is set. Velociraptor, Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior, El Toro Loco versus Megalodon, the fastest four of the night. Going to do battle Bari, two spots in the finals, up for grabs as the first 12 points of the event are ready to be given out to our racing winner. Coming up, who's going to take the first 12 points of the night? The racing finals are next when Monster Jam continues. Welcome back to round four in St. Louis as the final four get ready to hit the track in the racing semifinals. The first semifinal matchup is Jamie Garner in El Toro Loco, and he is up against two-time world finals champion Todd the Duke in Megalodon. Jamie in his fourth semifinal appearance, Todd making his first, and we are off and running here in the semifinal round, and it is El Toro Loco into the chalk line first inside the berm. Scott, Jamie is racing with a lot of confidence. Anytime you make the final four with this caliber of drivers, you know you're, you're off to a great race, and he's got a good start so far. Nice lead for El Toro Loco, halfway on the outside part of the track. Todd Duke now hits the final corner. Jamie Garner almost avoids it, and there's the finish line, and we that looks like Megalodon. We're being, El Toro Loco takes the win. We're going to take a look at the replay. Yeah, that's going to be a tough break for Todd if he can't dispute that, because I could have swore I saw Megalodon cross that finish line first from my viewpoint. Our, our cameras, it looks like Megalodon wins. There is a finish links timing system on the track with a better angle, so they must be seeing something we're not. Next up is Bryce Kenny in Great Clips Mohawk Warrior, his opponent, Travis Mowry in Velociraptor. And we didn't know if Travis was gonna be able to compete in St. Louis. He and his wife are expecting a baby, but he's here. He leads the series in racing round wins. And earlier we caught up with Travis Mowry. When I won my first Monster Jam freestyle in Houston, it was awesome. I had a lot of great competition behind me, but you know, I felt one with the truck. The crowd was electric. Monster Jam is a family thing. I definitely could not do this uh, career and passion without the support of my wife. We're both second generation drivers, so you know we ha understand the passion and the love it takes for this sport. What I'm more excited about leading up to this season is just continuing to progress as a driver. Uh, I'm a big racer at heart, so anytime I attack the track, you know I try to take it home. So that's hopefully what we're gonna do. 
And Bar, you said anytime you make the semifinal round of Monster Jam, it's a feat. Travis has done it every single event this season. Yes, and now he's dealing with the mental note that he might become a dad again. So it's really important that he keep his mind in the game on this race. He was a little slow there in the first turn, but maybe he can make up in the last turn. Let's see. Bryce Kenny has a racing win on the season already. Final turn. Look at the corner from Bryce Kenny getting it done. Great Clips Mohawk Warrior advances 24.220. Wow, that was a great racing pass from Bryce. I mean, he hit every mark that he had to to make a clean pass. Very confident racing pass right there from Bryce Kenny and the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. Finals are set. Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior up against Jamie Gardner and El Toro Loco. This will be their first meeting of the season. Two incredible racing records. Eight and three for Bryce, nine and three for Jamie. And here we go. Bryce Kenny making his way out. We got a little battle on the track between Jamie Gardner and Bryce Kenny. Anytime you're an El Toro Loco and you get to use the smoke like that, you got to take that opportunity, Scott. That was perfect timing from Jamie Gardner. What do you do, man? You pull the, the zombie truck up and start batting the hands at him a little bit? Got to do the zombie arms at any given moment. Bryce Kenny, Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior, Jamie Garner, El Toro Loco, 12 points on the line, and Bryce Kenny with a slight advantage to start this race. But he's up on two wheels, Bari. Wow, it didn't really slow him down very much, though. He set himself up great for that first turn on the outside of the track. He went really tight, and that's what it takes to get around this track fast. Into the final half of this outside oval track, Jamie Garner has a nice lane. Bryce Kenny tight around that turn pod, and Jamie Garner spins out. It doesn't matter what kind of corner you get. If you spin out, you're toast, and Bryce Kenny takes a win. Take a look at the replay. I can't help to think Jamie Garner saw Bryce Kenny on that last turn, and he went to hustle, and it bit him right there. As you can see, he's pushing way too hard. Bryce Kenny gets his second racing win of the season. He improves to 9-3, and three. so a great start for Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. And we are going to go down to the track with KCG and our racing winner, Bryce Kenny. This is your second racing win of the 2023 season. You have the highest race win percentage of anybody on tour here, and you showed it off here today. Well, I love being able to go against El Toro Loco there in the finals. Uh, he had snuck up ahead of me in points last night, and I think he was a point ahead of me. So that came down to, you know, who was uh, actually, I guess, since we faced each other, uh, you know, I guess we're tied right now in points. So I wanted that win bad. How about it, folks? Let's hear it for your Monster G. Jam racing winner, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior. That was the Bryce Kenny math segment of our Monster Jam broadcast here. Let's take a look at the BKT overall point standings. Bryce gets 12. Jamie Gardner now one point behind Todd LaDuke, two points behind Travis Mowry, three points behind the lead. And Camden Murphy in the top five, four points off the pace. Next up in St. Louis was the Great Clip Skills Challenge. In this competition, drivers could attempt two technical maneuvers on two wheels or choose to do a donut. They were judged by fans in attendance on creativity, skill, and execution. With 12 points once again on the line, let's take a look back at our top five competitors in the Great Clip Skills Challenge. Coming in fifth, it was Adam Anderson and Gravedigger with a great stoppy nose wheelie combo. Well, it's good to see they got Gravedigger fixed and back on the track because I was looking at that racing finish. He didn't even get to compete again, so he's got to start making up those valuable points, Scott. In for Todd LaDuke in Megalodon, a vintage bicycle. This is amazing. You have to really have patience to do the bicycle well and not set it down too early. Great maneuver from Todd LaDuke. In third place, Camden Murphy getting some points in Bakugan Dragonoid comes off with a nice stoppy nose wheelie. Camden's one of those guys who can do this in his sleep. You can count on him for a good nose wheelie any given time, and he perfected it right here in St. Louis. Consistency key, two top five finishes so far for Camden Murphy. Wow, even a little flare there at the end. That always gets the fans going. Coming in second, Nick Pagliarulo in crack and great control here on the moonwalk. Nick is really coming to his own as a driver, as a mechanic. Even great moves like this put the fans on the ragged edge, and I mean, that's what it takes to get that great score from them. Man, what a great job, Nick. And here is the winning run from the Professor Tom Mentz and Max D. Again, the Professor, he's perfected these nose wheelies. He's got a Guinness Book World Record because of it. And look at this. I mean, anytime you can back across the pod like that, always grasp the fans. Tom Mensk gets 12 points with the win as we take a look at our second BKT overall point standings of the St. Louis action. Todd LaDuke, Tom Metz now tied with 19. Bryce Kenny, Camden Murphy tied at third, one point off. Jamie Garner rounds out the top five, four points off the lead. One more competition still to go. 
Two events are in the books, one still remains. It's freestyle. Bari and I will get you all caught up and get you ready for the final competition of the night next on Monster Jam. We're halfway through round four in St. Louis and only moments away from the final competition of the event, which is freestyle. Welcome back inside the Monster Jam studio. Scott Jordan, Barry Masau are on the call. Barry, only two points separate the top four drivers after two competitions, so very competitive here. But I think we finally need to talk about the re-emergence of Todd the Duke. He sat at the top of the leaderboard with 19 points, third in racing, fourth in skills. No wins yet, but so far this season, this is the most consistent we have seen Todd the Duke been. You hit it on the head, Scott. Consistency is key throughout these entire three events of the, of the Monster Jam competition. You really have to focus on finishing in that top three, you know, to be able to have a chance at that overall event championship. Tom Mintz tied at the top of the leaderboard with Todd LaDuke, but Max D in the back right now getting worked on. Reports are it's a transmission issue. They're putting in a new one. So, Borea, I'm going to ask if there's a chance that Tom can miss freestyle, but I also want to add that if any team can pull it off, we've seen this Max D team do it time and time again. Yes, and, and even if Tom Mintz has to get his hands dirty and get in the mix himself, he will not let these St. Louis fans down. I guarantee you Max D is going to come back. Here are the BKT overall point standings after two competitions. We mentioned Todd LaDuke and Tom Mintz tied at the top, then a cluster in the middle. Bryce Kenny, Camden Murphy, one point behind. Jamie Garner, four points behind. Travis Mowry, only five behind as well as Nick Pagliarulo and Caleb Blood right there in striking distance. Anything can happen in freestyle. Anything can happen. I can't wait to watch it myself, Scott. Camden Murphy, last round one freestyle. He's going to get to come out last tonight. Tom Mintz is going to go back farther in the order as well. So a lot of these drivers in the middle of the pack will have an opportunity to set the pace. And we know that's important when it comes to freestyle. Definitely. you got to set the bar high because you got the heavy hitters. You know, those last three, I'm looking, Todd LaDuke, Tom Mintz, Camden Murphy, they are going to bring it because they want those points, those valuable points leading to that overall event championship. You know, Camden is a guy that's won freestyles in the past. He sent last year just to be the one competition he couldn't win. What's it going to take for him to go back to back here? He's really going to have to just focus on making that first 30 seconds and then wowing the crowd. He's going to close this event out. So he's really had no holds barred. He's really going to have to go for it because you know there's going to be some wow factors before he goes. Right, here is your current freestyle order. As I mentioned, Camden Murphy, Tom Mintz going to the back end of the order. Jamie Garner and Todd LaDuke in there as well. Bryce Kenny will get to kind of set the pace. Nick Pagliarulo, though, gets to come out first, and he is just a few points off the lead. So we can see a big night from Kraken Nick Pagliarulo to elevate him into, into the stratosphere. I love watching Nick go because he's wild behind the wheel of Kraken, so I'm looking forward to him opening up freestyle with a bang. Well, out first, here is the man, the myth, the legend, the former rookie of the year, Nick Pagliarulo. Rulo in Kraken, and he is wasting no time. Comes right off the FMX ramp. And there's a look at the freestyle criteria. Drivers have to finish the first 30 seconds of the run to get a score. Fans are judging once again in attendance. Want to see him use all the obstacles, be creative, throw in some wow moments, and maybe even a backflip. I just can't help but to notice right off the bat. I mean, he came out with a great combo move to announce his presence and really taking care of that first 30 seconds. That was a wild move at any given point in a freestyle. He just comes out bold with it first off. That was a great move. Nick's got one stadium freestyle win in his career. He did it in Tampa last season. Big air from Kraken. And I can notice right off the bat that his truck is landing better than I think it ever has. They put this truck back together in the off season. New colors, but I'm pretty sure they have some different valving in the shocks because it looks like it's landing great. At Osteen, Florida, Nick Pagliarulo cut his teeth as the crew chief for his dad, Matt. There's a nice side slap, whip jump, little fire underneath the chassis and Kraken now firing on all cylinders in St. Louis. I know for me, Scott, anytime you can send a truck with confidence and it lands well, that just gives you more confidence to even send it higher, just like that jump there, wow. Big time jump off the race ramp for Nick. I think he could have cleared a mile and he's coming right in for the backflip. Here goes Crack and he's got it up and he's gonna land this thing. Can he keep going? Yes, Barry, he can. Wow, he's in a great rhythm right now. And anytime you can land a backflip and keep going, that just gives you the green light of confidence. Okay, let's go. It's game on. I've got the fans right where I want them. Hopefully it's for a great score. Sparks are flying big time. There's Mama Pags, and she is cheering on her baby boy. 9.186 for Nick Pagliarulo. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. He's approaching that backflip ramp right now, and you really have to be careful on your speed there. Nick nailed it perfectly, executed it to the T. I love the fact that he landed that first out. Look how pumped he is. 
Somebody's got to follow that, and why not let it be Cole Bernard in the Black Pearl? He's had all kinds of mechanical issues so far today. Let's see if he can get him going. Here comes the Black Pearl shedding body parts. Man, anytime you can hit the first jump and shed body parts, you know that's another element of surprise for the fans, and they love to see carnage. As you can see right now, that hood and that windshield is coming off. Out of Murdo, South Dakota, Cole Bernard, the former crew chief for Adam Anderson and Grave Digger, the legend, a great driver, a two-time Triple Threat Series champion. And Cole Bernard now has the Black Pearl ready for this freestyle. He's getting some jumps here, some nice air, as we saw the Sky Wheelie. The Sky Wheelie really got my attention. The jolt of that truck leaving the ramp was really violent. And so I know that probably turned Cole Bernard on and say, all right, let's go. It's time to put Black Th Pearl through the paces. I think when you talk about the Triple Threat Series, which is, is temporarily gone away, you've been on that series. Cole Bernard is, is a former champion, but is a name that's not really talked about when you talk about the Triple Threat Series. I remember that because I finished second to Cole Bernard that year on the Triple Threat Series. And now we both graduated into the stadium ranks. And really the competition is second to none when it comes to Monster Jam in the stadium setting. You get big air just like that jump there from Black Pearl. That race lane seems to be giving a lot of elevation. They're coming in full throttle. We saw Kraken do the same thing. Now the Black Pearl gets up on the other side on the gray lane wheelie combo. I love the sense of urgency that Cole has got right now with the Black Pearl because Kraken, as you see the score here, 9.186, he's got to top that. So you've got to come out with a vengeance. And he's approaching the backflip ramp, Scott. He can top it if he hits the walk, the plank here in St. Louis. He's got Black Pearl up. He's got the rear. He could hit the moonwalk, but he couldn't quite catch it. So no walk the plank, but a successful backflip. And he's not done right over the wow. cars. Huge hair for Colvinard. That is an exclamation mark, if I've ever seen one, to close out a freestyle. Man, what an awesome move after that backflip. He's not done yet, though. He's keeping going. Seconds winding down, goes back up for the sky wheelie. And out back over the cars again, nice air crushing it so far is Colvin Arn and the Black Pearl. Oh, yes, that's a perfect end. That donut, don't get to see that quite as often as we would like in a stadium setting, but Colvin Arn, look at that first place. There's your new leader, 9.205, as we look at the super glue glue to the action replay. Brilliant air right there. And set himself up for this perfect backflip. We are just getting started with the final competition of the night. Freestyle continues. More carnage at the Dome at America Center when Monster Jam returns. Welcome back to Monster Jam as we continue on with Stadium Championship Series Red in Freestyle. Up next, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. Bryce has 18 points, just one off the lead of Todd the Duke and Tom Men. So a chance here for Bryce to come out here and take the overall event lead if he gets a little bit of help. What does he have to do on this track to win freestyle and take the event championship? He's really got to bring it, Scott. I mean, the first two runs were amazing. And sometimes that can work at a disadvantage. If you have to follow such a great run, you've got to keep that energy high. So Bryce Kenny and the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior has got a tall task ahead of him. Speaking of tall task, Bryce Kenny, a tall task just to get into Monster Jam, a former Division I soccer star, a former drag racer, top fuel drag racer, went to MJU, came up the hard way, got in to this beautiful Great Clips Mohawk Warrior truck. He has made it his own. It's not easy to follow a legendary driver. Bryce has had to do it. You've had to do it as well, but you make it your own. He's done that, and you've done that as well. Absolutely, and the fans love it. The fact that the, the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior is still flying high, Sky. Whoa, nice man. Nice popper there for Bryce Kenny. Oh, man. And I, I'd like to talk to Bryce after that to see if he felt that one because that was a harsh hit, but he's keeping going. So I think he's he's on a rhythm right now. That was a great wow factor. Here's another one. Great stoppy here for Bryce. Kenny showing some technical moves. Got a popper in, got a stoppy, now a nose wheelie. A lot of Monster Jam driving is reactionary, right? You'll, the truck's going to take you somewhere, but you got to pull it back. And that was a great reaction. There's no time to think in that instance. You have to do what the truck gives you. Brilliant placement from Bryce Kenny. Bryce Kenny now heading in here for a big eight pack backflip. If he lands it, he could take the lead. And that front wheel just crumbled under him. Can't get the save, but the fans may reward the carnage on the track. 9.003, not enough to take the lead. Could be enough to take the event championship. Take a look at the replay. I was gonna say, still a great score. The eight pack backflip is one that is like, it just throws the truck, it twists the truck any kind of way, and you have to be the one to react to save it. Not quite in time there for Bryce. Still a great run though.
Next up in freestyle out of Newport News, Virginia, Travis Mowry in Velociraptor. We've talked about him a lot here in St. Louis. I've been so impressed with this kid, what he's done. We mentioned about he's expecting a baby with his wife, Kaylin Miguez. When you have that on your mind, and that's enough to make any man kind of really feel what's going on in life. He's still got a pilot, this 12,000 pound Velociraptor truck. Yes, not only is Monster Jam a physical game. I mean, we are manhandling 12,000 pound Monster Jam trucks, but it's also a mental game. And when you add that to the recipe, Scott, of becoming a dad once again, it's in, and still having to wow these fans here in St. Louis, Travis Mowry is up for the task though. Coming into this competition, Travis Mowry, 14 points, had his five off the lead. We saw Bryce Kenny now with a great score. He is about four points in front of Travis. So Travis is gonna need some help if he wants the event championship, or you can just keep jumping over the obstacles and the landmines like that. What a move. That was a huge air jump from Travis Mowry. I love the look of this blue version of Velociraptor. As you can see, he tried that same move that Bryce Kenny got. He didn't quite get the reaction from the truck. He kind of skidded out. The brakes didn't quite grab the truck like he needed it. Had a great season last year in the arenas on Arena Championship Series West, driving Rockwell Red for Team Throttle Monster. They reward him with this new Velociraptor. You still won't even let me drive your old truck. He gets a new truck. <laughs> well, Scott, you know, there's still time for that. We, we never know what type of adventures we might face later on during the season. Oh, uh, you're just buttering me up. Speaking of buttering up, he's buttering up the backflip ramp. And here comes Velociraptor. Low center of gravity gets it over. But that front left wheel just went bye-bye on that truck. 8.463. Take a look at the replay. Oh, man, I know Travis really wanted to close out his freestyle with a bang, but instead, bang goes that front tie rod. He landed right on those front BKT tires, and that's what caused that rod end to break out of the tie bar. Tough break for Travis. Tom Mintz taking a stroll around the dome, still on the way. Three more trucks, each with a shot at the event championship. Can Jamie Garner get it done? The Crazy Bull comes out next. Welcome back to Monster Jam at the Dome. Before we continue on with freestyle, let's take another look at the BKT overall point standings after two competitions. Two of the top five have run three still to go. And if the event were to end right now, Bryce Kenny would be crowned the overall event champion. He is one point behind Todd the Duke and Tom Mintz that have yet to run. They have a shot. And then J.B. Carter, three points behind Bryce. He is coming out next, so he has got to take the freestyle lead if he wants a shot at the event championship. Hey, Scott, you hate to put pressure on yourself going into freestyle, but that's where the mental toughness really comes into play. If you can close out this event with a great freestyle and have a chance at that overall event championship, Jamie Garner has to do it now. And Jamie, four points shy of the lead. He needs to come out here and do something big. We saw Bryce Kenny get a great score. He sits in front of him. So Jamie Garner is going to have to come out and really take the lead here to try to get that event championship. That's a great advantage, and it can be a disadvantage of watching your competitor go that you have to beat, you have to top his score to be even in contention for that overall event championship. But I see Jamie Garner right now. He's blowing the El Toro Loco smoke. He's shedding body panels. So he's off to a great start so far. I talked to Jamie a little bit this week, and, and he is really loving every minute to be in this El Toro Loco truck. He said he was a little hesitant at first, didn't think it really fit with him, but it's a marriage made in heaven right now. Jamie Garner really stepping up to the plate in El Toro Loco, great jump, transfers onto the pod. And, and Jamie, you know, is a guy on social media, very active, but he started sharing the power rankings, and he's been consistently in the top 20, even the top 15 and 10. So I'm really happy for Jamie Garner. We'll see if he can get it done tonight. Anytime you can be in that top page of the power rankings, you know you're doing something right. And that's a confidence booster in itself. And Jamie Garner is driven with confidence all night long. I don't expect anything different in this freestyle competition. El Toro Loco hanging on by a thread. Much like my voice bars, it's because I'm pulling double duty as well. I'm singing your Thriller theme song every week live on Stadium Championship Series Blue. So here we are, nice sky wheelie for Jamie Garner. I love the stance of this Jamie Garner El Toro Loco version of the Monster Jam truck because it's so much wider than a typical Monster Jam truck that I race or even Mark List with the El Toro Loco on my tour races. He's got a great recipe, a great combination, and his truck looks like it's working amazingly. It almost worked its way into the dirt. Crazy recovery there for Jamie Garner again, clipping the side. And now coming over here to the backflip side of the track. We'll see if he's going to hit it. He's now got a donut going on. I don't think we're going to get a backflip, so you might want to try to do something fancy here. No, he has got the donut going, and now he is done. So a bit of an underwhelming end to what was a great freestyle run for J.B. Garner, 8.554.
Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. Anytime now in modern day Monster Jam, you really have to incorporate that backflip as a part of your freestyle if you really want to get a great score. Even with a great jump like that, I mean, that's a harsh landing with a great save to boot. So the fans really just reel for that backflip. Not everybody was able to get to the top of the leaderboard in freestyle. Let's check out some of our lower performing scores. Todd the Duke, a tough break for him. He gets shut off just seven seconds into the run. No event championship for Megalodon. Mike Christensen did get Vendetta out, still battle mechanical issues. He would finish near the bottom in the freestyle scores. Kayla Blood shed the body parts, didn't get a great score. Her run would end with 38 seconds left. Not enough to wow the fans here in St. Louis. Matt Pagliarulo risked it for the biscuit. Then he broke a tie rod on the back flip, so he would finish to the bottom of the leaderboard, 8.066. And the frustrations continued for Adam Anderson. His grave digger had some big air, but left 31 seconds on the clock. 8.385 for Adam Anderson. Now let's take a look at our current freestyle leaderboard. Cole Menard with the lead. Nick Pagliarulo in second. Bryce Kenny third. Jamie Garner fourth. Travis Mowry in fifth. Tom Mentz and Camden Murphy yet to run in freestyle. Coming up, two more trucks still hit the track. Camden Murphy, Tom Menz, both with a shot at the event championship. Find out if they get it when Monster Jam comes back. We are back in St. Louis for the conclusion of round four and on one of his home tracks, here comes Tom Menz. Now Bryce Kenny currently sits in third in freestyle. Tom with a one point lead over him in the overall point standing. So Tom here needs to finish third or better to win it. And he also has to hold off Camden Murphy, which is no easy task either. Not an easy task at all. But Tom has been in this predicament time and time again. I mean, he is the professor, so he knows exactly what he needs to do in this situation to put himself in a position to win that overall event championship with a great jump just like that. Wow, what a crazy landing that was. Um, there's been a lot of talk on your series, Stadium Championship Series Blue, about Ryan Anderson defending his series championship. But Tom Menz is in the same position, and somehow it still flies a little under the radar with the fans because Tom hasn't won a whole lot of series championships in his career. 14 World Finals championships, not a whole lot of series championships. That's a number that's eluded him. He's got a chance to go back to back now. Well, winning these Series championships is one of the hardest things to do in Monster Jam because the series is so grueling, it's so long, anything can happen mechanically. You really have to have your truck sound in each competition. And we run these trucks hard. We put them through the paces. So mechanically, these trucks really get put through a lot. Tom Mintz now on the deep side of the track, bringing Max D around the 20th anniversary of Maximum Destruction. He has turned it in. He's going for a backflip here. If he lands a big one, he could take the competition and the event win. Setting it up, goes right into the trench box, slides the back rear tires, and he's got a bit of a malfunction on that back left wheel. We'll see what that is. It came down a little wobbly. I didn't like the way it looked. Well, I don't know, Sky. Looks like he's OK right now. Oh, he's slowing down. He looks like maybe he's lining up for something. Here he great goes. lane here, Tom Mintz now going off. There he is, no trouble on that wheel. Wow, and that's the jammer jump. That's meant for like slap wheelies, and he just hit it full throttle. Got a great air jump out of it. About 30 seconds left to go in his run here. Tom Mintz already has the backflip. He's got that wow moment after. And now he's going to try to come back again up on three wheels. Goes Max D coming back again to the side of the berm. Nice side slap there, gets a whip jump, and now Tom Mentz going Whoa. over here, and he's got the save. Wow, talk about a great wow factor, and another one. Is that just the dirt getting tacky? Yeah, and then Tom is a little bit on the gas there, so that definitely helped him. 9.436, Tom Mentz takes the lead, and possibly the championship. Take a look at the replay. It's a great backflip he set up. It was a huge air backflip. I mean, Max D is really up there in the air. The fans love it. They get a great bird's eye view of that landing. And then he just turned it on from there. Our final competitor is Camden Murphy in Bakugan Dragonoid. And it's real simple. We saw Bryce Kenny math earlier. I'm going to give you Scott Jordan math. If he wins freestyle, he wins the event championship. If he doesn't, it, it's Tom Mintz. And now here is Camden's opportunity to say, here I am, guys, for the season. Watch out. I got all the confidence building. And he's really, really just needs to lay down a great freestyle run to cap off what a great e evening he's had already overall for this championship here in St. Louis. Last round in St. Louis was great for Camden Murphy. He won racing. He won freestyle. 
and he won the event championship to go back to back. He's got to make something magical happen on this track, and he's been doing it all season long. And not to mention, he came into tonight, Barry, three points behind Adam Anderson. He has overtaken that. So right now, hypothetically, we're going to wait for the final results. Camden Murphy is the series points leader. Yes, and that can give you confidence going into freestyle, which is something that he needs drastically here because Tom Mintz just had a great run. Camden, is the backflip is not going to do it. He needs a wow factor to really combo into uh, really getting a great score from these fans. So let's see if he can somehow set that up after maybe the backflip. How do you set something like that up, though? You know that the fans have seen five or six backflips already. You know you're going to try to get one, but how do you set it up afterwards? There's a great save right there. It's really just throwing caution to the wind. I mean, you have to get the backflip in. I've seen some times where you may not have to do a backflip, but you have to have an epic wow factor, maybe something that the fans have never seen before. Camden Murphy with a slap wheelie into a popper. Get out of Itasca, Illinois, former Rising Star winner, Rookie of the Year Outreach Award winner, has done it all in Monster Jam, yet to win a Stadium Series Championship or a World Finals Championship. So those have eluded him, and we'll see if this helps his case right here. Edging into the backflip ramp, goes off the container. Brake check in midair, he's got wow. the wheelie on the backside with the moonwalk. That's the wow factor I was talking about. Great combination move, and here's throwing caution to the wind. Big air jump. He's finishing on a high. Wow, great, great another save right there. The Unbelievable. Berm caught him. I think the berm actually caused that huge wreck not to happen. 9.341 is the score in freestyle for Camden Murphy. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. This is a great backflip. You have to have your timing down with a shifter to be able to shift into reverse right there on that rebound to get the back tires up and have the composure to balance it. So Tom Mance is going to get the freestyle win as we take a look at our final freestyle top five. 9.436 gets it done. Baku got Dragonoid second, Black Pearl third, Kraken in fourth. Great Clips Mohawk Warrior rounding out the top five. Tom Mintz gets the win. He gets the 12 points. And now we're going to take a look at the final BKT overall point standings for round four in St. Louis. 31 points is the total for Tom Camden Murphy finishes two shy with 29, Bryce Kenny 26, Nick Pagliarulo with 23, Jamie Garner with 22. And let's hear from your freestyle winner and overall event champion, Tom Mintz, Max D. Awesome night here in St. Louis. You know, to come up with a skills victory is tough always, but to beat this incredible field in freestyle, that makes me feel so good here in St. Louis. During skills competition, right before intermission, we lost second gear in the transmission. You know, a lot of times when you're doing some really cool tricks and skills, it can take out the transmission. Unfortunately, it did. We didn't have a whole lot of time to get it fixed in time for freestyle. We lost second gear. You have to have second gear to make a good run in freestyle. Fortunately, I got dirty as well. My great crew got it done. We got Max D back on track, and that's what brought this home for us. We could not have done it without the great work of the technicians, and especially getting out there and bringing this home. That'll do it for round four. Next up, we head to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, so stay tuned for that. For Barry Musauer, I'm Scott Jordan. Me and my voice will see you next time on Monster Jam.